Hello and welcome back to How to Be a Terminal Pro. In this video, we will be discussing launch CTL jobs. So essentially, we'll be writing our own scripts to run as background processes. And we will talk about executing those in a couple of different ways. So we can go ahead and open up the terminal here. And I have a few files set up for us already. So the first one that I want to show you is a script called data.sh. And the only thing that it does is it echoes the current date and time and puts it in this file called date underscore log dot txt. So we can execute it by typing dot slash data dot sh. And then we can look at the contents of date underscore log. So see it's just appending the date and time to the end of this date underscore log dot txt file but we can run it in the background with a plist and we'll put it in our launch agents folder. So to show you what I mean by this plist, we can open up the man page for launch D plist. And I'm going to jump down to the bottom by doing shift G here. I'm going to move up just a little bit. So we just want to grab all of this content here and save it as a plist file. So I've already done that. And we can see the contents of this data plist by doing com.js.data plist. And this is what is in there. So for the label, we need to just have this part be the same as whatever we named our plist. But you can pretty much put anything in there that you want. For program arguments, we have this array that just has a single string in it, and this is the script that will be executed whenever this job runs. And the key start interval tells the launch daemon to execute this script every 10 seconds. So in order to get that going, we can move our plist. So we'll move com.js.data.plist into this folder. In our home directory, it's under library and launch agents. And whenever we go to library launch agents, I can see that it's there, com.js.data.plist. And now we can load it by using the command launch ctl load and then the name of the plist that we put in there, js.data.plist. Okay, so that's running. We'll go ahead and let that run while we take a look at another example. So this is running on a time interval. You can also set them up to run at specific times every day. But the next one that I want to show you is how to execute a script every time a directory changes. So the launch daemon will just watch for changes in a certain directory. And we can do that now. So let's go back to my home directory. I have another script called sinker.sh. So we'll get the contents of that. And what it's doing is just rsyncing, but deleting files in the destination that aren't in the source. So this is the source here. I have this folder called start. And then on my server in the sites folder, I have finish. So if I open up that, it's 10.0.1.201 slash finish. It will just say forbidden because I have directory listings turned off. But I'll show you how to get that going as a process. So we just need to take a look at the plist file. So we'll take a look at that, js.sinker.plist. OK, so this looks just about the same as the last plist that we were dealing with. Just a few differences here. So the name up here, the label for it matches the name of the plist. I just called it something different. Program arguments, again, we just have the path to the script. And make sure that these are executable, by the way. So you need to command plus x them to make sure that they're executable. But then we're telling it to run whenever there's a change under users js slash start. So that's what watch paths is doing. It's just saying, hey, watch this directory. If anything in there changes, if you add a file or delete a file, then run this sinker.sh script. So let's take a look at that just one more time, sinker.sh. The options being passed to it, AZ, A is in archive mode, so it preserves permissions and ownership and timestamps and things like that. And Z just allows for compression. 
So we just need to move the com.js.sinker plist to our launch agents folder. And that's in our home directory under library and launch agents. So now if I go there, I can see that we have a couple of things in here. So I have my js.sinker and my js.dater. That's already running, so we just need to load com.js.sinker by using the command launch ctl load com.js.sinker.plist. And now we can go back to our home directory. So it's already been loading, and I see I have this folder called start here. So if I go into start, I see that I have a few things here, but I can delete everything there and I can create a file. So we'll do nano index.html and there's nothing in there, but I can say, hey, I just typed this. And now whenever we write out the file, it will sync it to our server automatically. So we really just have this mirroring of the start folder to the remote server, which is pretty cool. So let's open that up and see if it worked. HTTP 10.0.1.201 slash finish. And there it is. Hey, I just typed this. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of like a do-it-yourself Dropbox kind of deal. However, I do want to note that it will not trigger if you just have a change to a file. So to show you what I mean, I can go back into my start folder and I can edit the index.html file and this was added. And if I write that out, it will not take place, or it will not execute that script, and I can see whenever I reload the page. However, if I just create a file in that folder, it will. So now when I go to reload it, it comes up fine. So the last thing that I wanna do is just make sure that our data script is working okay. So remember, it was just appending the time to this data underscore log every 10 seconds. So we'll just look at the contents of it. And there we have it. Every 10 seconds it was running. Looks like it was just a, a second off, so maybe 11 seconds. It took one second to execute the script, but that's doing it consistently over the course of this video. So that's pretty cool. In order to stop any of these jobs, we just need to go back into our launch agents folder. and just run the command launch ctl unload and then the name of the plist that we have. So I'll say js.dater.plist. So that's unloaded and then I can unload com.js.sinker.plist. So that will stop these jobs. All right, and that just about wraps it up. Thanks for watching.